been way too long since I made a knitting podcast, so I'm back again. Instead, you are my paintbrush, you're my curriculum. Could have been the same. Hi, my name is Lisa, and I make knitting and crochet videos here on my channel. And welcome back to a new knitting podcast. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I have loads of things to show you. And for those of you who are new here in my knitting podcast, I usually discuss what I am working on, the objects that I have finished, and some knit plans for the coming weeks and things like that. It's basically just a way for me to talk to you about anything I like related to knitting and things. So yeah, let's get started. And just a quick note, I am filming this a little bit in advance because I am leaving to go on holidays uh, tomorrow in the evening. So if you are thinking like, hey, I think I already saw that as a finished object on her Instagram, that is definitely possible because I'm filming this a little bit in advance, so I don't have to film anything when I am actually on vacation. So that is why. <laughs> okay, let's start with the finished objects. And the first one that I have to show you is one that is actually one of my own designs and that I... I'm releasing a pattern on or by the time you're watching this it has already been released and that those are my orange socks they are very very cute oh there is some hair on them which is always the case in my house look how nice they are they were inspired by a book cover small pleasures and I really like that book cover so I wanted to create a sock design based on it. I think I kind of want to make a series about like sock designs based on book covers because I think that could be super cool and fun but I finished these they are so pretty and nice and the oranges are incredibly cute. I did finish these a while back so it's a bit difficult for me to think of what else to say about them but in terms of writing the pattern it has been so fun. I did a test call like over a month ago and I got some amazing testers that w were willing to test the pattern for me and their socks turned out so cute and they did so many nice color combinations that I really liked a lot so maybe I want to knit an extra pair up uh, soon of these in another color I think a pink could be super cool like pink with orange or a white one there are many many options so I loved the ones that they made and they were so incredibly cute and nice and yeah, testers are always the most fun thing ever because you get to see your work transfer to someone else and that is just incredibly amazing. So I have released this pattern by now, it is available on my Etsy and I want to find some time soon to also put everything on Ravelry and Ko-Fi and maybe some other platforms, Ribbler as well. But for now you can buy it on my Etsy page and yeah, I'm very excited to release the pattern and to see what you will be making with it. Well, socks, but like how they will turn out. So that is basically all I have to say about these socks. I made them using onion uh, nettle sock yarn. First time using that fiber and I really like the way that it turned out. It it was such a like a pleasure to work with and it turns like the stitches are pretty clean and I like working with the yarn a lot. It did grow a little bit so I would just make them a little bit smaller than you um, than your actual foot size. But that is the yarn I use and made them as always with all of my socks on tiny circular needles. I uh, can't do anything else now. I use DPNs for the toe and for the heel for those of you who are wondering but these socks really amazing really cute I will be wearing them a lot I think in winter right now the weather is a bit too hot to be wearing handmade wool socks but that doesn't stop me from still making them so that is for the first finished object socks <laughs> and then my second finished object is also a pair of socks and these are, they're a little bit bigger. These are the Blooming Lavender socks. Oh my god, they look like gigantic now that I see them like this. They are also a bit too big for me. But they are the Blooming Lavender socks made by Stone Knits. She's one of my favorite sock designers. And I think that these are very pretty. The only thing that I didn't really like about 
the pattern design was that I think um, this was the smallest size that you could make. I made them on 2.25 millimeter needles. I should have sized down to 2 millimeter, I think. But this was a type of pattern where they don't really specify having a smaller stitch count, but instead they say to use a thinner needle, like a smaller needle size. And I don't really like that that much because they are just still way too big for me. I am a size like 37, 38 EU size of shoes, but I have very narrow feet. So that is why I have to always make, make my socks super small so that they actually fit my, my foot. But these are really, really beautiful. They were a pleasure to make. I love them so much. And I mean, come on, they look incredibly beautiful, like really, really nice but they were just too big they're too big for me so i think i want to give them away to a friend or something that has a little bit bigger feet because they look like like especially compared to these they look so big because they are like too big for my feet but that is just the way that the pattern is written and i'm not a really big fan of that but i am a big fan of stone knits the designer and the lavender one that was like so beautiful it was really fun to make because it's not a difficult color work pattern and i love socks where you have color work up here and then down here you don't because i always want to have a type of project that i can work on without having to think about it so not color work or anything like that so that i can take it with me on the train or to work or just toss it in my bag and take it out and i can work on it so that is why I love socks like this, because this part I will do at home, like, while well, being able to look at the color work pattern, and then everything else I can do basically from anywhere. So that is something that I really like. You have like the fun part of color work, and then the easy part of just having to do a lot of rows of stockinette stitch in a round, which is just the easiest and pretty fun as well. So that I am a big fan of. And the yarn I used for the grey, I used um, Drops... I think it was either Drops Nord or Drops Fable in a greyish color. Um, for the, and for the purplish, like the lavender color and the green, I used Lang Yabol sock yarn. So those are the types of yarn that I used. And again, circular needles. I don't do anything else. For all of the sock knitters that are, that are working on DPNs or doing Magic Loop, know that your method is fine and that do whatever you want but if you've never tried tiny circular needles you need to because it's gonna change your life i really will yeah i think a while back someone in my dms asked me like why do you hate magic loop so much and i found it very funny because personally i don't like magic loop uh do whatever you want if you really are a big fan of magic loop try it but i don't really like working magic loop it's too fiddly uh yeah i i don't know i just it's not really for me but know that you are of course free to use magic loop <laughs> i found it super funny why do you hate it uh yeah i just don't like it but maybe hate is not the good word for it it's just not my thing so that is it for finished socks or at least a full pair because you will later see in my work in progress part that I also have quite some sock whips where I finished one and not the other. So this is it. These two ones are it for finished pairs of socks. The orange socks, which are my own design, and these ones by Stone Knits that are really beautiful. Then my finished object after that, it's a bit warm and a bit big and I don't think I will be wearing it that much in the near future but that is this cardigan it is really beautiful like it is a lace work cardigan so as you can see it has like all of the these little or little like these type of square-ish things on it as a design it's really beautiful and this is the Clotilde cardigan by Knitting for Olive it's on their website it's, I think it's by Pernilla Pernilla Janssen or, or something is the designer's name 
but it is really beautiful I do still have to block it yeah I'm a bit guilty of that but since I won't be wearing it that much soon I'm a bit lazy to to block it but I will be doing that in the near future it is made in drops wish yeah drops wish in beige which does look super nice and fluffy but I've, I've worn this once and it has already started to shed so much like I was on the tram and I literally left a whole trail of little shedded fluff from this cardigan so I definitely won't be wearing this with a backpack or like a heavier bag because the friction is causing it to shed so much but the yarn, I mean, it does look like so fluffy and beautiful and the color is really nice. I love that this is like a neutral type of thing that I can just throw on all the time. And yeah, it's really, really nice. But for the yarn, I don't think I will be using it again just because it's... I don't feel like it's gonna last that long since it's, since it's like shedding and peeling quite a bit. So... I think if I want like fluffiness, it's much better to have a wool with a mohair type of like combination. I think that is on the long term more dur durable than a fluffy type of yarn like this. It is very very beautiful and airy but also warm and yeah I do like the look of it a lot but I just think that I won't really be using it again because of the shedding issue. It is also like quite affordable, drops is always a good accessible option for most people. So yeah, this one, very very beautiful. In winter I think I will be wearing it a lot. The sleeves, they are a little bit on the short side, like as you can see, they they are like until, up until like here. So I do want to block it and then maybe stretch out the sleeves a little bit. And this was for me the first time doing a chart based like a uh, lace type of pattern so i um i did find that it was a little bit difficult for me to not make any mistakes at first i did it just on my computer and i marked down the the things that i already did like on the chart but then i decided to print it out which was actually so much easier and better to keep track of one thing I was very happy about was that it was knitted on 10 millimeter needles, so it was a quick knit, you could get through it pretty quickly and even when I did have to unravel it a few times, it wasn't that big of a deal and it was fine. But I did really enjoy knitting the lace pattern, like with the yarn overs and then knitting two together and everything like that. It's just that once you make a mistake, you have to unravel it and get back to it and... That's a bit annoying, so this is definitely not something that I would take with me. It is like a stay-at-home type of a project, which I do think is fine for like these bigger type of cardigans. I wouldn't take it with me that easily anyways, so I think that it's not a big deal. But just know that when you are starting this pattern that it is a lace pattern and that you need to kind of stay focused on it a little bit. And I do really like the, the raglan type of style with this cardigan. And there are some German short rows in the neck as well that yeah, you can't really see them when I just have it like this. But when I'm wearing the cardigan, you can kind of see that it sits a little bit higher up in the neck. And I do think that that is very um, like a good type of model. Like The cardigan I'm wearing right now is something I made. Oh, a year ago I guess I have a tutorial on this one up on my channel but it is so simple and doesn't have a lot of details to the construction or anything so it is nice to see that a thing like for example German short rows can really change a lot and initially I wanted to add buttons to it but I think that in the end I won't be doing it because the pattern only had a button hole like at the top here so then I would have to do like one button here but I think also that it is not something I would wear closed so yeah I don't know I think that like this is fine but maybe if I find really nice buttons somewhere I will add them but for now I think it's fine without buttons like I said before 
I won't really be wearing this a lot in the weeks to come, so it's fine. I can decide it later in winter. And this is, I think, something that I'm also gonna take with me to go to France, which I will get to later in this video. And then my last finished object that I have to show you, that I can show you is uh, something completely different. And you've also already seen this one in my knit and chat video that I did a couple of weeks back when I had COVID or couple, yeah, a couple of weeks back. And that is this one. This is the, I had to think of it, Camisole number no. 2 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is really nice and I made it a lot more cropped than her pattern because first of all I am short and I feel like uh, she's quite tall so she makes her patterns pretty long and that wasn't really necessary for me. In the end I wish that I did it a little bit longer, like a few centimeters longer. Now sometimes it is a little bit on the shorter side but still it's not incredibly cropped or anything like that. So this one, it is made in Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in I think Terracotta Rose, which was my first time working with Knitting for Olive and I got quite addicted and like bought a ton more Knitting for Olive yarn, which wasn't too good for my wallet, but the quality is just really nice and it was a pleasure to work with. I really like it. And I think for summer tops, it is the perfect type of yarn to, to work with. It was knitted on 3mm needles, which did mean that it was not really going that quickly. It took me pretty long, I think like maybe two or three weeks to just work it. And I didn't even do it full length. And I saw some people that said that it was like a super quick knit for them. And for me, it was not at all a quick knit. And that is mainly because I am not the best at doing uh, ribbed, ribbed uh, knitting. This is knitted in 3x3 three three rib and I usually knit in continental style if I am doing stockinette. But for ribbing I cannot really do that. I have tried everything. I've tried Norwegian pearl and I could do that but I didn't like the fabric it created. I thought the stitches were too loose. So I ended up going back to my English style knitting for ribbing which I like knitting a lot but it's just so slow. So that is why this was not a quick knit for me at all. And then the rest of it, it was super nice. I really like this, this uh, the way that it shapes at the breast. I think it is very flattering and it was super fun to knit as well. And this is such a timeless piece. I can definitely see myself making it in another color again, maybe next summer, I think. For now, I'm good with this design for this summer, but in the future, I can definitely see that. The only thing is that with these type of thin strappy tops, yeah, I am someone that needs to wear a bra. I cannot go without a bra. It's just a, not an option for me. And I don't like bra straps showing. So I did order a strapless bra to try out and see because right now I am wearing it mainly with a white shirt underneath and then putting it on top of it or in the house or with a bikini because then I don't really mind the bra straps showing but yeah sometimes I wish I would be someone that was able to wear this type of thing without a bra but I just can't so that is one thing that I love my favorite things knitwear designs for summer tops but not all of them are very bra inclusive I would say she is releasing a new pattern or maybe it is already out but I don't think she released it in English yet of a new camisole that looked super nice and that has straps that are a little bit thicker so that is perfect for all of us people with bigger chests out there uh, to have something to cover your bra straps if you are like me and don't like bra straps showing okay so do I have anything else to say about this the back is just not very special, it's just like fine. I do think maybe I could, because I made this in a... Oh, I'm trying to actually put my sizes and measurements more often in my uh, podcast because I know that it can really help. And for example, night sky knitting and also high fiber knits, they are also both doing that a lot and I really like it. They're one of my favorite knitting podcasters on YouTube here. But I made it in a size small 
and I am a I'm trying to think how to word this. I think my bust circumference is usually like around 88 centimeters, something like that. But my problem is that my waist is super uh, small, but that I have a, a bigger chest. <laughs> so that is something that you have to keep in mind. And I do think I could have gotten away with maybe a size extra small as well, since this is something that just grows a lot when blocking so now it is a bit of a looser fit and not as tight and form-fitting as maybe the original that design was intended to be but this is fine for me for a summer top as well and i made this one um i made it in a size extra small this cardigan because on ravelry i had noticed that many people said that it was quite big and that they either chose to size down in needle size and go from a size 10 millimeter to a size like eight or nine millimeter but since i didn't do that i decided to make it a size extra small and it's perfect except for the sleeves that are a little bit short the rest of the fit is pretty pretty nice so yeah this top is my is it my latest finished object yeah i guess so actually i finished this about two weeks ago or something and i haven't finished anything in the meantime but i will wear this a lot this summer i think it's just so nice and airy and yeah the only thing that you have to do keep in mind is that when i was making it i thought like that lengthwise this was definitely good enough but of course it stretches out a lot in the width so that means that it shrinks a bit as well in terms of length. So that is why I wish I would have done it a little bit longer. And another thing that I skipped is that in the original pattern, you have a one by one rib at the bottom here. Like, uh, And I didn't do that because I didn't really like the way that it looked. And since it is knitted in rib all over, it doesn't really have a purpose, at least in my opinion. So... I started immediately with 3x3 three three rib and I just liked the way that it looked more. And I did start over like three times because I tried Norwegian Pearl, didn't like it. I did the one by one rib, didn't like it. So I started over like a couple of times, but in the end I made it, I finished it and it was very fun to knit and an easy knit. I think for beginners it is also a really suitable project the only thing is that it is knitted on three millimeter needles so it's not a very quick one but if you are patient and you are a beginner definitely doable camisole number two by my favorite things knitwear okay so that is it for all of my finished objects and now let's get on to all of my whips which are quite a lot of whips as well <laughs> the first one that is like a half finished object half whip is a pair of socks well i finished one sock and i'm working on the second one but that sock is it is a bit difficult to show so maybe i will put it on my sock blocker to show you okay my sock blocker is a little bit too big for this sock but at least you can see it a bit better they are these zigzagular socks here you can see it with this amazingly nice zigzag pattern that goes along the, the whole sock, which was so fun to knit. It was so fun to knit this, and I'm working on the second sock, like I'm just at the, the cuff. And the thing that I really liked about this sock, okay, I'm gonna take it off because my sock blocker is a little bit too big and I feel like I will stretch it out too much by putting it on there. I really wanna get a smaller pair of sock blockers because yeah, these are too big. And if you see the lighting change, uh, the sun is going and coming back all the time. So that is why. <laughs> but yeah, this zigzag detail is so nice. This is a free pattern actually that I found on Ravelry when I was just looking for some free sock patterns. And they are, as I said before, very, very, very fun to knit. I think the, the thing about free patterns that is so amazing is that you can just look at them, change, on, change some things, take some inspo. And this one I really, really uh, liked a lot for a free pattern. It was kind of like very well written and it used some techniques that I hadn't used before, 
for example something quite simple but i had just never done it and that was twisted rib um it looks so beautiful you can't really see it i think like this but i had never done twisted rib before and yeah i really like the way that it, it looks it's just very beautiful and i like also that there is like this continuity i'm not sure if you can see it but i will do a close-up where you can actually see that two of these rib lines they go they transfer into the like snake zigzagular type of pattern and it's just such a smooth transition and i i really like those type of things it did use a what's it called like a slip knit type of heel and then you have to turn the heel flat and do the gusset with decreases and that basically and i am more of a german short row type of heel fan but this was fine as well it, it was the way the pattern was written so i didn't really want to change it too much so that is what i did and the yarn i used is this hand dyed yarn Womit Verve. um i will link it down below i have talked about it a few times before because I got it at the Handwerk Beurs in Zwolle a while back that I also made a little vlog type of thing about so you can see it in there but these ones were really really fun to knit up and the sizing is pretty... I did a pretty good job in terms of sizing I made the smallest size which is a 56 stitch count sock and for me this fits pretty perfectly the length is something you can amend in the pattern and you can choose what length fits you most and try it on in the meantime and blah 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 the only thing that did happen because you need some type of cable needle to make the zigzag pattern because you need to pull put stitches on the hold or like at the back or at for like back or forth of your of your work at the front or at the back of your work then knit one stitch and then knit the other this explanation is really bad but in the pattern it's quite clear but i don't have a cable needle for size 2.25 so what i did was i just use a dpn to put the stitch on and then use that but i did let me see which one it is yeah i think this one i did break or I didn't break it entirely but I kind of sat on my DPN and I heard a little kick and it's not broken but it did like splinter a bit so I need to get some new DPNs in 2.25 and I really like these very short ones because I don't like the long fiddly DPNs so let me know where I can find nice short DPNs that are not too expensive and I think I want to go for metal ones this time because I do really like working on the wooden ones but they just break too easily in a size this small so let me know where I can find those if you have any good recommendations 2.25 so I know that it's not a very common size a lot of sets they have 2 millimeter and 2.5 and everything like that but I'm looking for 2.25 specifically because that is my favorite size needles to knit my socks on so with the second sock i'm just at the cuff nothing special about it i think i will be working on this in the train that because i'm going to france to the south of france we will be going by train and i think that this is a perfect project to work on in the train because it's not too complicated but also fun and challenging and it's just so nice that you knit everything in stockinette and then only at the part of the little zigzag you have to do some pearls and do the little zigzag transfer thingy so the pattern designer herself she also says that like this is the perfect pattern if you want to showcase the yarn like this yarn is incredibly nice looking with purple and a self-striping yarn could really work for this as well so if you have a yarn that is really beautiful and you want to show the how beautiful the yarn is uh, but still want a little bit of fun and a little bit of difference instead of just doing a plain stockinette vanilla sock i think that this is like the perfect description of it and yeah i really enjoyed working on this one so much and i can't wait to have a finished pair i think that they can look so cute in my low doc martin shoes and yeah really nice i don't really wear purple so often 
because I think that warmer tones fit me a bit more. Well, right now I'm not wearing warm tones at all, but in general, I think that warmer tones, they ordered greens and things. I like those more than purple and yeah, like than purple and blue-ish usually. Not really making any sense here. But I, let's just say I don't wear purple uh, very often because I don't think it's a color that suits me extremely well. It's fine, like, but I'm not really uh, gravitating to it usually. But for socks, I think that they are very cute. This lilac color, it is summery, it is spring-like, and that is good for knitters like me who like autumnal type of color so much but right now it's summer so it's time to do something summery and i think that these socks and this color are really perfect for it and the thing with hand dyed yarn is that it is always a bit of bit of a surprise how the sock will turn out and how it will knit up and i am very very satisfied with the way that this one looks right now and i keep my sock stuff or like the sock that i'm working on i keep it in this little sock bag that I got at Solstrande Grenne for all of us Europeans out there that have this store in their country go over there they have the most amazing like little project bags and knitting accessories and things like that and they are not expensive at all so when I was with my knit club yesterday we all had the exact same like these one like the exact same project bags and I think that it, that it is like super funny but these are just so practical and nice and yeah i really like this one a lot then the next whip that i am working on and i see that i've lost the needles for this but i kind of <laughs> okay <laughs> the next whip that i'm working on is this little frog and oh my god it is so cute you cannot really see it because i need to still do the the legs for it but yeah it is pretty cute and this is a frog that I think was very popular on Instagram a couple of weeks back. It was this one reel that was just incredibly cute. And I saw a lot of people making it. I saw uh, Rachel from Night Sky Knitting making it as well. And I loved her frog as well a lot. So I really wanted to make one myself. And I started on it when I was quarantining because I had COVID. So I started working on it back then because I wanted a fun little project. But then once I got to the legs, I kind of just put it away, forgot about it. And now it's a couple weeks later and I still need to finish it. And it is very, very, oh, so cute in this little look at this. Dude, I do have a few things to say about it. First of all, the pattern is really nice. It is by Dots and Pebbles, I think is her designer name. And it is super nice, the pattern I enjoyed working on it a lot is fun it's well written and it is definitely some type of some project that you need to keep an eye on the pattern the whole time because every row is different and the rows are very short only a few stitches so you need to really be sitting down and focusing on the pattern and not really doing anything else in the meantime and i was making this when I was of course quarantining so when I was sewing together the panels or like the front and the the white belly and the the green the back together I didn't really follow the rules and I just sewed it together like with um what's it called not Kitchener stitch mattress stitch I think but I kind of winged it and didn't look at the pattern so then later on I saw that you needed to sew this part where the of like kind of the nose in a different way and you can see now that my stitches are kind of messy and okay camera died so the angle is a little bit different but I'm back but <laughs> you can see that the stitches are kind of are kind of messy up here because I like I said I winged it I didn't follow her rules of or like her instructions of how to do it in a nice way so that I am kind of not satisfied about but I'm also really too lazy to unravel it and redo it and I mean it's a little frog it doesn't have to be perfect and the other thing that I did is that 
I bought some eyes a while back for this frog, but I didn't pay attention to what type of size eyes you would need. So I think in the pattern it says to use 12 millimeter eyes and I had like 8 millimeter eyes. So the eyes are really, really small and you cannot really see them from the side, but yeah, it's so cute. It's a frog. You don't have to be perfect, Mr. Frog or Lady Frog. I think it's a Mr. Frog. It feels like it's a guy to me. But I'm gonna work on the legs later this week, hopefully, and finish it. And maybe I want to make a little cute sweater for it as well. I think that could be super cute, but it's nice. And I used um, two strands of Drops Alpaca yarn. It is the perfect shade of like this moss green type of shade. And it is so nice and fluffy and yeah, it's a really quick knit. This only took me one afternoon, I think, to, to work on and I just need to find some time to actually work on the legs <laughs> and finish it. Okay, now let's get on to my second whip or no, not the second whip, my, I don't know, third or something. My most active whip. I am most actively working on those zigzagular socks. And the lilac ones that I just showed you and this is the other one that you've also already seen because I was working on this in that knit and chat video when I had COVID and that is the camisole number five yeah camisole number five this is Ta-da! I finished uh, the body last night I did like a stretchy two by two rib cast off and this is camisole number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear and this is this type of halter top that sits pretty tight and high up here and I decided to not make it crop this time still a little bit more crop than the original design because again I am short and she is tall so I made it a little bit shorter I think instead of 27 centimeters I did like 24 or something like that or 22 so I made it a bit shorter, but it's not really cropped for me when I'm just wearing um, some high-waisted jeans. I can really like tuck it in still and yeah, it's like the perfect length for me. And I do still need to block it so that will add some length as well, I think. But I really, really enjoyed working on this one. I still need to do the armhole. It's like a folded... A double knitted edge I think something like that which I need to figure out how to do that because I haven't done it before so I hope the pattern explanation is pretty well written so I can just easily follow that and I need to do the some ribbing for the neck hole type of thing but the one thing that I love the most about this is the color this green is so amazing I have like this left and then a whole full skein as well and this is Knitting for all of Merino in Clover Green and oh my god, this is just so beautiful and yeah, I really really like it. It is the perfect shade of green like for me, this is really when you're talking about green, this is it. This is it. This is green for me. This explanation is kind of weird again, but you can <laughs> kind of imagine this is like green, green, green. So I really like it and I cannot wait to wear it once it is finished. I think I will start on that folded edge like tonight because I don't want to start working on that in the train when I'm like confused and things but hopefully once I get going it's not too complicated and I can just work on it in the train um, the whole day and finish it I want to finish it before my birthday and right now it is Saturday and my birthday is on Thursday so I think that should be doable when I only have to do the the edges and I have been working on this for a pretty long time now it's I've been working on it since like for three weeks or something like that and that is because it is knitted on three millimeter needles and that is just so slow ah yeah it's very slow but I do really like the fabric that it creates and in the end it is worth it and I will be able to wear it a lot and yeah I just have to stay strong and be patient and finish it and I made it in a size small yeah, inside small since it's pretty stretchy and again I hope that that strapless bra will fit me because this is also something that is very uh, narrow in a halter top type of style so I really need to be wearing a strapless bra with this but we'll see if 
that will work out but yeah very very pretty fun to make pattern is well written the way that the increases work along the sides are like very nice and yeah it looks pretty clean and i really like it a lot then in terms of another top i have one last summer top that i am working on right now and it is one that uh, you cannot really see how it will turn out because it is not knitted in the round it's knitted flat and it is this top the yarn is getting kind of tangled oh, let me untangle it it is this tiny thing that i've made so far and this is the i think trilla 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 something like that top by knitting for olive it's written on their website and i'm also making it in knitting for olive cotton merino in i think mustard mustard yellow something like that or ochre i kind of forgot the name but i will link it or i will write it like here so you can see what color it is but it is just this garter stitch top i was really in a mood for something garter stitch which is something i don't really knit often but i think it was because i saw bethany from well love knits doing a garter stitch cardigan a while back and i was like oh, i really want to make some summer garment with garter stitch as well so that is why i chose to make this top and it is knitted on five millimeter needles which was also something i was really looking forward to because after all those three millimeter needle tops i really really was in a mood for something a bit with a bit bigger size needles so it would work up a bit quicker so this is what i started working on it's so far been really fast and really fun and yeah again something that i don't really have to think about too much when working on it because construction is pretty simple you just make it this is like the length so you make it uh, flat and then sew it i think at the side i think that is the construction in the end but to be honest i will just follow the pattern and it will be fine and i'm making it in a size extra small because again with the other knitting for olive pattern of the, um, the clotilde cardigan it also turned out pretty big so i thought i could do a size extra small and with garter stitch when you block it it can grow quite a bit as well so yeah this one the trille trill trill top by knitting for olive and the color is very pretty it is just really really nice i wasn't really sure if it would fit my skin tone but i just found the color so pretty and i think that actually it will kind of work out i guess and if not i will wear it anyways because i don't really care and my last whip is actually a single finished object and i still need to start on the other one yeah that, that's how far my second sock syndrome goes it is this sock and this is the heart stopper sock really really nice and pretty Ta -da. it is inspired by this book cover of heart stopper novels and i like it so much this is one of my own designs because i really like the heart stopper series on netflix and i really wanted to make a knit design inspired by it and i actually made the design for the leaves on stitch fiddle but then i had a hard time actually figuring out how to do it because it was too many colors and the repeat didn't work out so it got incredibly messy and not nice looking and no it just i wasn't a fan of it at all so what i ended up doing in the end was actually knitting the whole sock first or no not the whole sock i made the the cuff part then in duplicate stitch i added the leaves and then i finished the rest of the sock so that is what i ended up doing and i really like the way that it turned out i have it like only on one side those little leaves and yeah it's just really really nice and cute and this is made in drops nord and then the colors that i use for it are the pink is in drops nord this is socks yeah by coke knits the yellow is yavol lang yavol yarn and the blue is also socks yeah by coke knits or coke knits or whatever so that is the way that i dealt with the problem i really liked the way that it turned out and it's beautiful and it was fun to work on i really like duplicate stitch but i don't use it 
super super often so it was fun to use it in a sock the only thing that of course with duplicate stitch is that it's not really that stretchy so that is why i made the sock in a 60 stitch count instead of 56 so it would have a little bit more room and it wouldn't be that bad that it's not very stretchy and that it doesn't feel like as soft as maybe the floats would feel and this is what it looks like from the inside you can't really see it that well but a lot better than like all the floats that i had before it looked very ugly and yeah it was not a success so this was a great solution to it and i need to start working on the second sock but i didn't do that because i used my needles for the other socks so i i had problems with like having no needles to make the second sock on but now i ordered some extra cables i bought some extra cables so it's completely fine and i can actually start on a second sock which i will do probably again in the train tomorrow or like the day after tomorrow when i'm going on vacation so yeah very excited to make the second sock and to have like a finished pair of heartstopper socks and some people have asked me if I'm gonna write a pattern on it. I think that what I will do is I will publish the, the chart of the duplicate stitches for the little leaves. I will publish that chart for free on my Ravelry page. I think that is what I will end up doing or on Ribbler or something because it is quite simple and I don't think that you will need instructions for the rest of the sock since you can basically make this duplicate stitch pattern on any type of sock in stockhead stitch so that is what i think i will end up doing but maybe i will change uh, my mind you never know so that is it for whips i think yeah quite a lot of whips but i have some abandoned whips as well that i have shown you shown you already in previous podcasts like the excellent fat vest and um, a sweater and things like that that I did start on like a couple months back but that I'm really not in the right mood for right now and that I don't think I will be finishing anytime soon so I won't bother you with showing those and yeah I kind of abandoned those and started working on other things instead yeah I know it's not a good habit but I'm also a big fan of just working on whatever you feel like doing and right now for me that really is summer tops and socks and like smaller projects and like I'm not in the mood at all for having a big sweater on my lap and like mm, no it's I get already so hot when I just think about it and no no motivation for that so I have abandoned those for a while and I will get back to those once the weather starts getting colder again okay as for new acquisitions let me think since it's been a while since i last recorded a knitting podcast i have had quite some new acquisitions in terms of like tools and things but some of those i have already discussed on my channel but i will still get them to have a quick mention of what i have bought in the past months or so okay first of all my one big purchase or no i have like two big purchases but that is my, let me close it, the Lika needle set in Amber. I bought this, I think by now it's been a couple of months ago. And this has been incredibly good to use. With, to use. The needles are so beautiful, they're so fun to work with and they are like perfect. If I would have to recommend any type of a bamboo or wooden needle set, this is really the way to go, at least for me. I really really like these and I just see that one of those little pins to tighten your needles it fell out so I have to put it back in <laughs> yeah it's just really beautiful such a good investment and as I said before I'm planning to do a more in-depth review at one point but I just have to find some time for it and to really do some research and write down my thoughts on it blah 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 and my other investment, a little investment, is the Chago needle set for socks. I've already gotten so many messages from you guys ordering this set as well because of the videos. And yeah, this is just really nice. 
If you are a sock knitter and like working on tiny circular needles, this is really an investment that is completely worth it to make. So yeah, not gonna talk too much about these because I've already talked a little bit about them before and I don't wanna spam you with this needle type of content, but these two lifesavers and worth every single euro cent that I spend on it. <gasps> And then I also have like two little project bags that I got. I think by now I have like way too many project bags and I really don't need them anymore. First one is this one. It I got it from uh, Soustraine Grenne as well, like I mentioned before. And this is I think actually a bag for toiletries and it has a zipper with it, which I think can be really useful for a project bag. And yeah, it's just cute with these little, these little flowers on it and really nice. And the other one I got is from Stephen and Penelope, a very beautiful yarn shop here in Amsterdam. If you ever have the chance to visit them, do it. If you are in Amsterdam, they have beautiful yarns in them. And this is the little project bag that I got from them. And I embroidered this little flower on it because I was bored and I wanted to try embroidery, which I'm really bad at, but still very cute. So that is it for like tools and things uh, as acquisitions and then I have some new yarn to show you as well. Okay, there are definitely, you can definitely see a kind of theme here with all this yarn. It's like warm colors basically. But the first one that I got is this merino yarn by King Fiber. I got only one hank but I think this will go a long way. And the main reason I got it was because, first of all, I loved the color and then I saw that it was discounted. It was originally 25 euros, and uh, tw 35 euros and it was discounted to 25 euros. And this is such a pretty like orange yellowy color and I really, really liked the way that this looked. And I was immediately imagining this one knitting for olive top with it. It, I will, I'm not really sure what the name, maybe, I think it's like the olive top. It has all these beautiful leaves on it and I think that it could look amazing in this color. So that is why I got it. I got only a single skein, so I do think it will be very cropped, but I think it should be possible. And King Fiber is just a really, really nice brand. Do, do check out their website. They have amazing yarns, hand dyed yarns that look incredibly beautiful and this one I got it's in the color biscuit this one really really pretty then I got some knitting for olive yarn as well these ones I haven't used yet they are in silk and they are in copper and I'm really curious to try out the silk because I haven't I have tried out knitting for olive merino and uh, cotton merino but I haven't tried out knitting for olive silk so I really want to try those out it's a color, copper, really beautiful color. I think it looks very great with my blue eyes. And yeah, I cannot wait. I want to make, I again forgot the name, but it's a top by Knitting for Olive. And it is this type of wrap top. And I think that it could look amazing in this color. And I got three skins from, uh, from this one. I have only two now, but one of them is in the basket over there. Then I have this sock yarn that I still want to use. It is by Atelier Het Wool based um, hand dyed yarn, basic sock yarn. I got this at the Handwerk Beurs a while back and yeah, it's just incredibly pretty and really, really nice. Can't wait to make a sock with this. The only thing is that 50 grams for me is enough for a sock if I do the toe and cuff and heel in a different color. So I'm thinking of maybe using, this is my avocado yarn that uh, you could see in, not last week's, but the week before that video that I hand dyed yarn with avocados. So, so, so pretty. And I think that this color combination could be very beautiful to use this one for the, um, for the, heel and the cuff and the toe so who knows maybe i will use this in a combination but i'm not really um sure yet uh don't have made any def definite plans for what pattern to use and things like that so that's it for new yarn acquisitions 
try to keep it short try to keep it a little bit fast because you will hear about all these yarns once I actually start making a project with them then in terms of my knitting plans for the upcoming weeks my first plan is of course to finish all the whips that I'm working on right now but I'm also trying to look a little bit further ahead and in terms of gift making I really want to make some magic toadstool socks in maybe a beige color I have made magic toadstool socks before in pink for myself but for a friend's birthday in September I really want to make them in like beige and more autumnal colors so that is really on the list and I'm looking forward to that a lot because I really like the magic toadstool socks pattern the first time I made it so I really want to make a second pair with them then also I really want to make more summer tops like I said before I'm working on quite a few now and I think that actually for now I'm good and I just want to finish the ones that I am working on and the ones that I plan on doing the knitting for olive uh, tops that I just talked about when showing the yarn in terms of summer tops I think after that I'm pretty settled and then I want to move on to winter knits and sweaters and cardigans and sweater vests and things like that and another type of sock I really want to make are the ruffle socks by petite knit I have this light green yarn that I think could look amazing with it so that is on the list as well it's this light green yarn let me grab it this color let me show you this one I think would look very nice in the petite knit ruffle socks pattern so that's it for like quick plans that I want to work on yeah I'm not really sure about anything of that yet my other plan is basically that I have to sort out my yarn stash and make a big decision which is which yarns to take with me to go on exchange for one semester and which ones I will leave behind at my mom's place. The upcoming weeks are gonna be hectic, I'm gonna move out of this apartment, I'm gonna need to pack my suitcase for five months and I'm also gonna have to choose which yarns I can take with me and which ones I will leave behind. So yeah, some big decisions coming up and it will all be completely fine, I just need to make some decisions and yeah like check out what to take with me and what to leave behind and that's always difficult to do especially when you are a yarn hoarder like me yeah and I need to be strategic as well because I probably well no I for sure won't be having a wool winder and a swift in my during my Erasmus exchange semester so I need to wind up all of the hanks that I have before going um, yeah so that's on the to-do to list as well, to do it in the upcoming weeks one day. And I also need to decide now, this afternoon, which yarns to take with me to go on vacation. But that won't be that difficult. It's just a week, so that will be fine. Okay, if you stayed all the way to the end, you can hear my raspy voice because my voice cannot last for that long. But if you stayed all the way to the end, thank you so much. Let me know what projects you are working on. What are your summer projects? Are you still working on sweaters? Do you just not care about the summer weather at all? Let me know because I'm always curious to read your stories. If you like this video, please like and subscribe because that really helps me a lot. And I will see you again next week. Till that time, stay safe. I love you all a lot and doei! Could have been an astronaut Instead I drive for miles just to